Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill, got another video for you today, and this is a walkthrough of uh, the Clock Tower Elite, uh, one of the new raids, a part of the Birds of Prey DLC. Uh, this is coming from the EU server with Pony, uh, Gadgets Controller. You'll see me flip between two builds right now. The, I'm starting off as a buff build, that's why you can see the claw buff, uh, and then I'm primarily in the boss fights using a power troll build, uh, just because this setup that we're going for is a solo healer. Uh, I've had so much lag. Well, it's not just me. It's the entire the entire U.S. service has so much lag. So I haven't really been able to get any kind of reliable raid footage out. Uh, I do intend to do the the uh, fire and brimstone elite uh, on the U.S. side because I'm I'll show it as a nature DPS point of view. So at least you have some different kind of footage. Uh, so hopefully I can get that if there's not kind of lag. We'll have to wait and see. Um, so that's it's. But it's not just me. The entire service had tons of lag. So going into the beginning of Clock Tower Elite, uh, it's very similar to normal in terms of the you have the trap drones in the hallways. If you have your augments leveled up, you can turn those off. Uh, you'll see on the U.S. side, I can turn them off because my augments are leveled. Um, they're not leveled on the U, uh, EU side. So the there is what there is an internal cooldown of roughly about three minutes uh, per uh, augment. So that's, they don't really tell you that. You'll see what happens now. I'm losing powers. People are dying. We're getting stunned. So the, the hallways here are, are in Clock Tower Elite and Clock Tower Normal as well are just kind of a big, <laughs> a big mess of, uh, of uh, overlapping stuns. So the, it makes it really big issue if you're using any kind of channel powers, especially like Doomspin. Um, you're more likely to get explosive shots off in the back, but you know, Doomspin, any kind of channel powers like uh, Nature, um, if you're using um, thorn burst at all, not thorn burst, uh, impaling thorns, munitions I've had, I've had struggles with on test server, fire DPS, so any kind of channel is really kind of frustrating. But as you saw, the, the hallways are really straightforward. You can, you can turn the trap drones off if you want, or you can just kind of ignore them, walk by. Um, actually, I should probably shut up for the cutscenes. You guys can uh, actually now, no, you guys, you guys saw the cutscene from my test server video, so I can keep talking. But yeah, if you, the only, not so much trick, but the, your best rule of thumb for the trap drones is if you're not going to turn them off is to get out of range of it, and then you get your powers back. So with the first boss here, uh, we have Poison Ivy and Catwoman. The, the drones, the discharge drones that come up with the arc lightning fields, which you'll see uh, in a few moments, they're tied to Catwoman. Uh, so the ideal strategy is here to burn down Poison Ivy first, get her down to about 5%. So the, the general mechanics for this fight, if the bosses are close together, they have a defense buff. Uh, so Poison Ivy and Catwoman. So obviously you don't want them to be tanked together because of how that defense buff and take a lot longer to actually complete the fight. Uh, the other general mechanic is you just saw the red text on the screen saying they're frenzied. They're going to get a red ore around them. And the issue there is their damage goes up significantly. Uh, so what you have to do is have both tanks bring them together. So the issue with that is that Catwoman does not like to follow the tank. Catwoman likes to stand and block in place, uh, and it's not easily being able to move her. So the tank that is on Poison Ivy is the one that moves uh, the boss to Catwoman to bring them close together. So just be mindful of that. If you see Frenzy, if you're the Catwoman tank, you know make sure she's not close to the wall because the NPCs like Black Canary and Huntress can, uh, can body block and trap Catwoman. So if Catwoman can't get close to the wall, it's very difficult to pull Poison Ivy. So just be mindful of that. Uh, but the Poison Ivy tank is always the tank that is going to be mobile and bringing over uh, during the Frenzy. So usually best rule of thumb is what I've done is, is pop a supercharge and run over. Because Poison Ivy, when she is buffed on Frenzy, her Solar Flame and her Thorn Burst attack can hit for like 190, 170k. Uh, the other issue is that when Catwoman skulls, she can lunge out at the group. So the tank can kind of body block her. But the issue is that that's not always reliable. So block on a Catwoman's sc uh, skulls just in case she lunges out. Or if she's facing the group, her whip thrash can also hit. So now we've gotten Catwoman down in health. The discharge drones are out. So you'll see me with that red arrow above my head. Similar to Darkseid War Factory. Uh, technically you can pass that arrow, but it's not really uh, recommended. What you want to do is get to the back corners or the back wall. So you can see here that arc drone in the top right. If you're on the screen here, that's placed. I place the other arc drone there. You do not want any arcs in the center. You want to avoid those at all costs, uh, just because they're going to arc and hit everyone. So the other thing is that when those discharge drones are out, you want to have DPS target them. So ideally, since we're running a solo here, we have uh, four DPS. So we have one DPS stay on the cat one on the boss, and then the other three DPS kill the drones. 
So the, the priority here is to kill the drones because the, once the drones are killed, as you can see, the arc fields disappear. So when you have discharge drones out, those are your absolute priority. So disregard the boss. So if you have two healers during out in this, in this boss fight, make sure all the DPS are focused on those drones because you want to have, they're going to respawn in like 10 or 15 seconds anyway, but it's, it makes a huge difference having that 10 to 15 seconds out. So the other damage here, you can see there that disappeared just while I was turning the cogs. Those, that's Catwoman's Caltrops. Uh, that's tied to her mechanic as well. And then you can see on the right here, that thorn burst field, that's uh, poison ivy uh, tied to her mechanic. So it's, it's just a damage over time. Uh, ideally, you don't want to stand in it because of kind of overlapping damage with that. And the arc field can be adding a lot. So we have trap drones out. You can turn the cogs on them. I don't have augments up. I don't think most of us in the group have their augments up. Uh, besides a couple so once again you can certainly turn those off don't worry about destroying the trap drones uh if you can turn them off great if you don't then you know don't worry about it uh, ideally obviously you don't want tanks and healers to lose their powers because uh, it does take you know an upwards of six or seven seconds to get them back so that is an issue unless you move directly out of range like i said before in the hallways but uh priority if you priority is to have your augments up to turn the trap drones off that makes it infinitely easier so turn them off great they do eventually come back, but it's not really a worry about. But as I said before, number one priority in this fight is to kill the discharge drones and then focus on the bosses then. The other thing is the bosses have to be killed um, not exactly at the same time, but very close together. So that's why you see Cat, uh, Cat one has like 1% health and Poison Ivy has 1% health. Or they'll stand back up. So you just saw the red text up on the screen. So once you kill one boss, you have a very short time to kill the other ones. So that's why you want to save all the orbitals towards the end. And as you see, we just completed it there. So this fight is more about placing the arc fields in the correct places and the DPS check on the drones. Uh, it's designed to be a GPS check. The longer the drone, the arc fields are out, the more overlapping damage you have from like Huntress's Aero Storm, the Caltrops, the arc fields. So this is whole, it, it's a damage and heal check this entire fight. And then the tanks have to watch out that they don't get uh, caught up in Frenzy. But it's... It sounds like there's a lot going on, but it's a really straightforward fight. As you saw, it's, it's it can be really straightforward. You just have to be make sure that you're prioritizing the right targets. Uh, so after that, we go up here and it's more in the hallway. So I'm switching back to my uh, claw buff build. So in this build, in my main power troll build, I'm running Parasite, um, Amulet, and Scrap of Soul Cloak, which is my typical meta controller build. And this one, I'm running Claw, uh, Cog, and Amulet. So this is just obviously to buff the DPS and to uh, buff myself as well. But same thing, always the same one. In terms of the, the bots themselves, I think the, the Ver bot is the one that has the wing armor. So it's going to, um, if you don't remember the wing armors from back in the days, it basically just flies around and CCs you. Uh, the Shimmer bot teleports and has some uh, pretty big damage on the skull. So you'll see groups... Um, not groups white, but you'll see a lot of deaths in the hallway just because of the massive damage There's just too much damage for one healer to cover most of the time and you're entirely stunned. You can't do anything. So the uh, it, You'll see the trinket that I'm running on my number eight slot is the breakout trinket It just it's really handy just for the hallway fights. So you don't have to worry about that stun It's not gonna last a long time. That's why you kind of alternate between that and distract But I mean that's just best practice if you're worried about it as a DPS and having a channel power, I mean, you can break the, you can pop the breakout trinket before you start the fight. But that's all it is. It's the exact same type of bots you find in the hallways that uh, you did in the first hallway as you do this one now. And then you can't uh, jump ahead. You have to kill the ads before you uh, are able to progress. So now we're into the puzzle room. Uh, this one is really straightforward, uh, a lot more straightforward than the puzzle game, a part of uh, Metal Part 2. So as you can see in the beginning, uh, there's going to be a picture that comes up on that screen, and it's going to correspond to a cog uh, on one of the terminals. So each terminal, can it can only happen once, so you're not going to see duplicates of the same image. So the other thing is, well, you can stand on top. Uh, best practice is to stand on top of the, the mainframes, because you can turn the cogs from the top. So you just, as we can see here, all the players are spread out. Once they turn their cog, they can DPS because they know that same one's not going to come up again. Same thing, I'm just turning that one, going back up. Uh, you will have add spawn. If you fail, adds, you'll add some more spawn. You'll have to kill them before you can wipe. So it's one of those things you just be mindful of the tank because the adds are going to keep spawning. If you kill them all, same thing. If you kill them, I'm just going to keep spawning as well. So 
best practice is just to hold them, you know, DPS after you've turned your terminal, but to make sure you obviously don't fail, because you gotta, if you fail once, you got to start over again, so obviously you don't want to do that, but super straightforward, all of this is a pitcher game, you're just matching up the pitchers to the terminals, standing on top of the mainframe, which is just easier, one player can easily grab two terminals, that's not an issue, but it's it's a super straightforward puzzle, there, there really shouldn't be any, you know, needed to be walked through, you're just, all you're simply doing is matching up the pitchers. So yes, it can be a lot easier to grief in pugs, but I mean, that's the unfortunate thing. But so far, like my this has been a really fun raid. This is the same developer. If you've missed my test server video talking about this raid, the same developer that did this raid also did uh, Darkside War Factory. He's also done a bunch. He, act, he also worked on Nexus Reality. So in terms of uh, mechanics and difficulty, this developer knows his stuff. Yeah, this is raid is really easy in terms of uh, in terms of elite compared to other things, but that's more just kind of par for the course. But mechanic-wise, it, it's fun. It just obviously needs to be tuned up a bit. So the main mechanic to this fight is going to be the color-changing pools. Now, they took those out of normal and event, so you're not going to have the pools there, but elite, they spawn just a bit more. So... What you want to do is definitely don't run up the walls and place in the sky like those fools have done in their videos. Don't do not do that. Absolutely don't do that. Uh, what you want to do is simply, uh, the best way, either look at it as a circle or look at it as a triangle. So spread out the entire group. Everyone's going to take their own space, just like, you know, social distancing. Uh, you're going to place your pool in the spot where you stand and then simply step to the right. Don't walk forward. Don't worry about that. Just step to the right so you're in between you have the space in between so you'll see it, it basically it's a completely damage check you're gonna have change color once so see that uh, mechanic now that's where we're placing a pool so everyone's standing spread out we're gonna place the pool now I'm gonna step to the right so I've got I can easily just stand there even though the pool is close I've still got plenty of room uh, the other main thing you have to do when uh, the boss is gonna do a skull it's gonna pull you in and do damage so 100% block that so now I've got the second pool. I'm standing in between. Going to place my pool. And now I'm going to simply walk in front. And then as I do that, my first pool disappears and I walk back. That's all it is. You're just rotating that. So now when I, the next pool phase, I'm going to drop it exactly where I'm standing. Then my second pool is going to disappear after a few seconds, as you see here. I'm going to drop it. Actually, now I change color so I can technically stand. You can stand in the same color field. And then I'm just walking over. See, it disappeared. That's all it is. So the... Basic rule of thumb is that if I'm red, I can stand in a red pool. If you're blue, you can stand in a blue pool. If you are red, you can res or revive a red player. If you're blue, you can revive a blue player. If you are standing close to another player, you're going to arc damage. As you can see that, you'll you'll arc damage towards them if they're the opposite color. And it does massive damage as well. So obviously you want to avoid that, which is why we're spread out. And the other reason why you don't want to get pulled into the tank, because the tank could be a different color. Uh, as you get the boss down as well, the uh, Oracle Pulse Bolts are going to spawn. Those have uh, shields on them, so those ones are more of a damage check. Right now, a, a single tank can uh, CC and, and pull them in, or technically you can do a second tank. Like in this setup, now we're doing solar heal and solar tank. Uh, that's not necessarily what you have to do. That's just what we choose to do. Uh, but you can easily run a second tank for this and switch in that fight to be able to pull those adds because you 100% want to CC them because they will kill you and wipe you if you don't. As you can see in the in the uh, damage log there, 48k just from one hit of them. So you definitely want to make sure that there is a tank at least CCing them. If that mechanic changes in the future, then that could change. Uh, right now, you can CC them as a tank, and that's all it is, is rotating that. So make sure you block that skull. Uh, the Oracle bot can also pull you in as a teleport. You just have to make sure you can't block that. You have to just roll out of the way. The tank has to make sure that's going to happen and call that out uh, That uh, when she raises her hand so that they can roll out. So that's all it is. It, it sounds like a lot of things are going at once, and it is, but it's once you get the hang of it, it's really straightforward. You know, the nine times out of ten, what's going to kill people is standing in the wrong pools or standing too close or the overlapping pools. But you've got plenty of space to spread out. Uh, this is a hundred percent personal accountability by players. You know, if you've got players not paying attention, not blocking, not standing too close, uh, that's where you lead to issues. But a hundred percent. Very simple to spread out, just like how we showed here in the video. Uh, that is, can easily be accomplished. And when you have a straightforward run, you know, you're looking at about a 15-minute raid. So any kind of questions or concerns, put them in the comment section below. 
If not, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.